Hello, my name is Tom Brassington. I'm a PhD student at Lancaster University based in the Department of English Literature and Creative Writing. My PhD focuses on gender and how it is performed within a branch of literature and culture known as the Gothic. I've been asked by your school to create some resources as part of the outreach work my department does. These are designed to support your current learning in English classes, to encourage your critical thinking abilities in new and accessible ways, and to give you a flavour of what studying English literature to a degree level can look like. The following is one resource on the woman in black, looking at the text in a Gothic tradition called female Gothic. So the term female Gothic was coined by the feminist scholar Ellen Moyes in her 1976 book Literary Women. For Moyes, the term female Gothic denotes a subgenre of the Gothic which uses the genre's conventions to explore issues pertinent to women. In her chapter on it in Literary Women, Moyes used uses Mary Shelley's Frankenstein as a case study to demonstrate such issues. Before I outline some of these characteristics, I would like you to pause the video and think about what these issues might be. If you have read Frankenstein or parts of it, think about what in the novel may have anything to do with women's issues. Likewise, what in The Woman in Black could be considered a gothic version of women's issues? Once you've written a bullet point list of five issues, play the video again. I'll now go through what Ellen Moores wrote on female gothic and you can compare your bullets to this to see what did and did not match. It's important to note here that in English at university you're writing arguments. There is no wrong answer, only differing degrees of successful and convincing arguments. So if you think you can successfully argue a point with evidence from text and contexts, you're on your way to writing a good piece. As well, easy arguments are often ones everyone thinks of so it can be quite boring to read and stressful to write with originality. It is usually better to grapple the argument that you find most captivating, as generally something you enjoy writing from. You enjoy writing makes for enjoyable reading and a refreshing, original and different argument. With that said, we'll now move on to what Moore said on female gothic. She starts out her description of this subgenre by stating that what I define by female gothic is easily defined. What I mean by female gothic is easily defined. The work that women writers have done in the literary mode that since the 18th century we have called the gothic. So in its broadest sense, female gothic is every gothic work written by a woman. On Mary Shelley, Moores writes that nothing so sets her apart from the generality of writers of her own time and before and for long afterward than her early and chaotic experience at the very time that she became an author with motherhood. Pregnant at 16 and almost constantly pregnant throughout the following five years, yet not a secure mother for she lost most of her babies soon after they were born, and not a lawful mother for she was not married, not at least when, at the age of 18, Mary Godwin became, began to write Frankenstein, So Monsters Are Born. Summarise these quite lengthy quotes, I've written the following bullet points for you. So part of what makes Frankenstein a work of female gothic is that its author, Mary Shelley, had a turbulent experience with pregnancy, motherhood and infant death. Having children outside of wedlock was illegal in her time in the early 19th century, and her children often did not survive their infancy. These experiences pepper her life and therefore her pr fictional production and creative endeavours. Now, infant deaths were not uncommon until the 20th century, and Shelley's losses would therefore have been unremarkable, unfortunately. Rather, what was remarkable was that she remained a writer as well as a mother who experienced infant death. As such, she brought her experiences of pregnancy, childbirth and motherhood to the creative table, filtering them through the freshly developed genre of the Gothic. So that's what's important is that by maintaining her career as a creative writer, she invariably brought in these experiences to the text that she would have been writing, which would be very different to most female writers of the sort of time and before where they would have been likely to give up that career upon becoming a mother or to just never have had children and remained spinsters.
Later scholars have expanded on Moore's writing by arguing how childbirth and motherhood are intimately connected to questions of power and of women's agencies. agency. We can use Moore's motifs to ask questions about the gender divisions of primary caregiving and household maintenance, about people who cannot or do not have children, and even consider how much value is placed on womanhood precisely because of the ability to bear children. The female gothic motif and sort of the centre of that image around childbirth and motherhood asks a, can be used to create, ask a lot of questions about the position of women in society more generally. Moore's explanation of the motifs of birth and motherhood are a rich seam to explore complicated questions of gender representations in our culture and how that is creatively portrayed in Gothic works. Gothic works complicates these representations and questions we may ask of them further. Like you can push these images quite extensively to ask a whole range of questions and create a whole range of arguments about women's issues in and the creative expression of them. We'll now turn to The Woman in Black and explore it as a female gothic text. First though, I would like you to pause the video and write down some ways that the term that the female gothic subgenre is applicable to The Woman in Black. How is this text a female gothic text? How does it creatively deal with women's issues through the gothic images it presents? Aim for a five bullet point list again like in the last exercise and then Hit play the video again. I've written two notes on what I think are parts of what make The Woman in Black a female gothic text. The first is a note on how on the theme of child loss and the presence of that in the novel, and the second note is on author biography. Again, your notes don't have to match mine in order to be correct. What's more important is your ability to successfully argue that that bullet you've made is evident in the text as a creative expression of women's issues in a gothic form. That's how you would argue it's female gothic. Um, so child loss is one of the novel's main themes, with the cause of the woman in black's hauntings being the loss of her own child, both through its death and via their enforced parting, the death of children she causes, and the inevitable demise of the protagonist's own child at the novel's close, which is seen in this quote, our baby son had been thrown clear, clear against another tree. He lay crumpled on the grass below it, dead. We can also see it in the way that Mr. Jeremy has been permanently traumatised by the loss of his child to the woman in black, which is seen by this quote. He had been weakened and broken by what? A woman, a few noises. Now, this presence of the theme is throughout the novel and is the first thing that my mind identifies as making this text belong to that female gothic subgenre. To argue that this is a sort of motif of the novel and therefore make it, makes it a female gothic text, I would note things like how the children die with the children's deaths cause devastating emotional effects on the parents. Indeed, the whole story is written in, in an attempt by Arthur Kipps to exercise the trauma he experienced from the death of his child and wife. Likewise, Janet Humphrey's own ghostly business comes directly from the fact that her child was taken away from her and its preceding death, meaning that the woman in black herself is partially a response to child loss. As well, Mr. Jeremy's weakening is caused by the loss of his child due to the woman in black. In using the gothic figure of the ghost and the motif of, motif of hauntings to explore the effects of child loss and infant death on parents, the novel begins to be situated within the female gothic subgenre. It's using the, the creative space of the gothic and the aspects available to it as a genre in order to explore these issues by being haunted by a ghost you can explore how um, traumas also haunt people. It can be used to explore certain psychological issues like that because ghosts don't exist in, real, in realist texts in a lot of ways. This is why the Gothic is quite a useful genre because it has those 
supernatural elements which can be used to explore complicated issues in an accessible fashion. My second note concerned author biography, and as I pointed out with the Moore's quote from earlier, one of the conventions that she identifies in female Gothic through her exploration of Shelley's Frankenstein as a case study is the necessity of bringing aspects of an author's life to a creative work. A key aspect of Moore's reading is that Shelley brought certain biographical elements to her creative work, which are implicit in the novel's concerns with reproduction. The no Frankenstein, the novel itself, being about the creation of life and humans' roles in that. So we then need to ask, we can then ask if the Woman in Black has similar biographical notes that might inform our own reading of the text as a piece of female Gothic work. It's not an unknown fact that Susan Hill likewise experienced the premature birth and infant death of a child sometime late in the late 1970s to early 1980s. With The Woman in Black being published in 1983, it is arguable that the impact of this infant death works its way into the novel, making the novel in part a personal reflection of the author. One piece of evidence for this would be Jenna Humphrey and her revenge and passionate love for her lost child, but we can also turn to the novel's overall shape to draw that connection as well. After all, the novel is written from the perspective of Arthur Kipps attempting to deal with the feelings he is experiencing regarding the loss of his own child. If the novel is all about experiencing a, and processing an infant death, then the fact that the author experienced an infant death is necessary to factor into our understanding of that experience. There's a suggestion that this is not just a purely fictional endeavour and that there might be a personal investment in the text that has a impact on how we understand the emotional sort of rhythms of the work like why is all this so scary it's so repetitive do we constantly relive those experiences of trauma and in this case of infant death so in closing i hope i've demonstrated how susan hill's the woman in black can be read as a gothic novel part of the female gothic subgenre and encouraged you to think about how this text uses Gothic images and motifs for the creative expression of a certain set of issues. In this case, issues related to motherhood, pregnancy and, women, and infant death. Whilst these issues are not the only issues women face, a lot of questions can be raised from this focus on maternity about womanhood more generally. I'd like to end this talk with a couple more questions for you to consider. These being, what are what other texts have you encountered that could be considered as female gothic or read in a way that encourages thought about issues relevant to women? Then, what does this style of thinking about specific works, i.e. thinking of texts as female gothic, stop us from thinking about with these texts? It's important to note that putting a sort of label onto a text as much as it can open up a way of thinking about a text, like with female gothic, we think about women's issues and how they're present in a text. It also stops us taking, that, taking certain paths of inquiry and thinking about certain things. Like we could be willfully reading into the text these things about motherhood and maternity or thinking of those as only women's issues rather than there being other issues that women deal with or that maybe paternity needs to be thought about as well. So it's important to think about how these labels stop us from thinking about certain texts and as much as it start, encourages us to think about these texts. Another question to consider is what may the novel's context reveal about women's issues? The novel is set at more than one point in history, with some of it set in mid 19th century England, Kipps's recollection of it being in the Edwardian period, and the novel itself being published in the 1980s. As well, you are reading it in the 21st century. 
how does the novel speak to each of these periods, if it does at all, and the women's issues of those periods, again, if it does at all. This is why there's a lot to sort of unpack with these, with this notion of female gothic, because it, it's one of those things that sort of, you can poke and prod it and a few more questions will come out and you'll end up developing greater and greater thinking about it over time. I hope this talk has helped develop your knowledge of the Gothic and how the woman in black fits into that genre of literature and media. I also hope that it helps with your own readings of the text as a way to challenge and encourage your thinking about English literature and literary work as it relates to your curriculum. This talk is partly informed by my own research and from conversations with staff and students in Lancaster's Department of English Literature and Creative Writing. Whilst I cannot take questions on studying English in this talk, please feel free to send any inquiries you might have about studying English to the email address you should be able to find on the web pages in this link. The link takes you to the department's web pages on the university website, which I which has a which will have an FAQ sheet on it as well as contact information should you have any more complicated inquiries for the department's admissions team. Thank you.